Hey guys, it's DC and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary where all soap lovers are welcome, guys. This is my Days of Our Lives review of Mother's Conviction, guys. So guys, as you guys know, I'm only doing uh, three reviews this weekend, General Hospital, Days, and Hollyoaks. I could not do all eight. I was over ambitious and I talked too much on Monday, all right? So now I'm, I'm redirecting myself now, all right? <laughs> I think Days has gotta be the best of the soaps what I've seen so far this week, because I get to see Y&R and B&B, so I reserve the right to change that, that, that statement anytime, but Days so far to me has been the best this week, the best. I wanna just first start off with Kate Roberts, Kate Roberts Demira. I was gonna talk about this last week, but I didn't get a chance to do the review. Everybody was coming after her for uh, knowing that she knew what Lucas did to Sam and she didn't say anything. Kate is a ride or die for her kids. Billy, Austin, Lucas, Philip. She is, right. oh, Rex too, Rex and Cassie. Wait, wait, Billy, Austin, Lucas, Philip, Rex, Cassie. She, so she got six kids. Two of them are who are with Roman via Vivian Alame as a surrogate. But Kate is ride or die for her kids. And I think that was her problem because Lucas did not deserve that grace. Lucas did not deserve that grace. He didn't. Lucas did not deserve that grace. Understanding how certain things he's treated Kate in the past, he didn't deserve that type of grace from her, honestly. Lie to your own son. Stop it. Stop Shut it. Up. You hear me? Shut Stop up. it. Shut up, Mom. This is between me and Nicole, and I want to know what's going on, and I want to know right now, so start talking. I made one big business deal. I mean, your mommy here paid me to be your adoring wife to the tune of $5 million. You won? I can't believe this! How can you betray me like this? I did not betray you. I did not betray you. I paid her. I paid her so that you could have Will. If I hadn't paid her, Sammy would still have custody of him. You would never see him again. Lucas, I had no choice. No choice! So who cares? We got all the money in the world. We got Victor's inheritance. Victor's inheritance is mine. It's not yours. What? You heard me. If you don't sign that agreement, I'm going to make sure that you lose everything, including your son. Have you got that? Well, wait a minute. Why don't you just take a gun out and shoot me? Because I don't have to. I'm taking away your money. You... <gasps> and the next one, the one where he slapped Sammy, I watched that in real time back in, I think it was 06 or 07 when that happened. I hate you, I hate Kate, I hate my whole life, Lucas! You know what? <laughs> Sorry I have to do this! Oh, please! Wait, wait a minute, whoa, whoa, where'd you come from? Wait a minute, what are you doing? I got a call from your neighbor about a domestic disturbance. Wait a minute, no, no, I can explain this. Come on, man. You know what, tell it to the judge, buddy. We saw the whole thing. You're under come arrest on. for assault and battery. So Kate always seems to get the short end of the stick, or at least it feels that way to me on days. I mean, honestly, <sighs> Sammy loves her toxic men. I feel like that's, that's a Sammy Brady issue. She's gotta work on that within herself. And I don't understand why people didn't understand point of view. Like even with EJ, like with him getting upset with Kate and Chad, and I understand him taking out his, his anger on Chad, which I'm gonna get to that in a little bit, you know, because Chad is his actual brother. Kate never messed with him. Kate never liked him. Kate never cared about him. So to me, that I, I understood that a little bit. I want to talk about Chanel, Ali, and John, guys. I am glad that she finally picked someone. I thought she was gonna go with Johnny to get some of that Demera money. <laughs> like I said, can't be no romance without finance. <laughs> uh, but I guess she went for Ali, which makes sense because Johnny, you know, he already got his chance with her in a sense. They were already married, and maybe she wants to give Chanel uh, uh, Ali a chance. It's a little too close to comfort to be working with someone and then being so intertwined and then you're also in a relationship with them. But okay, good luck, Chanel. Let's see how this works out for you. It says works out. But I get it. I mean, especially with Ali, with not Ali, but Johnny being a Demira, um, there's a lot of drama there. There's, there's a lot of drama there. And as best she, 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 she goes with a Horgan. It's gonna be a little less drama. You still gotta have drama. This is Salem, but it's gonna be a little less drama then. So I, I can commend her on that one. I wanna talk about the prison 
pardon episode, which I think I covered this last week. Did I do a day's review last week? See, I don't even know. God, see, that's how that's how boiled my mind is. I don't even know. Um, it was well written, and hopefully we get to see these characters interact um, with a lot of people on canvas, like Rolf and, and Kristen, obviously with the Demirs, which we're already starting to see that. Um, Gwen with the Devereaux and the Hortons. Um, and Orpheus and Evan with the whole town. And honestly, I would love to see Evan and Sonny interact. Like, does Sonny know that Evan has been released? Maybe a romance there? Well, never mind. He's married to Will, but still, a good affair storyline, right? And somehow you can put his, his brother Alex into the mix. So I, I would be here for that. I want to talk, guys, really quick about the new detective, Jada. And I said something about this in my last, on my GH video, if you watched it. The drama is in the details. There was a scene, okay? All right? Work this on out. There was a scene, all right? Let me work this on out. Y'all ready for me? Y'all ready? There was a scene where she was in the Brady pub with Kayla Brady. And she said to Kayla something about how she apologized to her because I guess she had some attitude with Kayla about something about having to do an arrest or something like that. And she apologized to Kayla and Kayla was just like, mm. and there was just something about that interaction. I was like, something about that there. There's something, something about that there. Something about that there. And of course we know that Jada is the daughter of Steve's longtime friend who he grew up in the orphanage with, Marcus Hunter. So I said to myself, hmm, Marcus Hunter. I've never heard that name before on, on days. And I said to myself, huh. And Kayla's interaction towards Jada was a little off for me, right? It was a little off, you know. And, and, and the fact that Jada brought her back, there's gonna be, there gotta be some type of connection. She's gonna have some type of connection with somebody in Salem. And then it dawned on me, what if she's Kayla's daughter? Can you step no music? <laughs> and let me tell you something. I want on SoapCentral.com. Because SoapCentral.com, you can search up a character on the show and it'll tell you everything they did, who they're related to, ba da 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 So I looked up Marcus Hunter. And guess what was listed under Flings and Affairs? Guess who was listed? Kayla Brady. <laughs> I was like, ding, 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 ding. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. She is definitely Kayla Brady's daughter. I'm going to say this one more time. So you guys can remember, y'all heard this theory that I had, y'all heard it here first, my prediction. Kayla Brady is Jada Hunter's mother. I'm t listen, I've been watching those for a long time. I can, I can sense things from a mile away before they happen. Like when, when, when Morgan and Ava were on GH and Morgan just said, to, Morgan simply just said hi to Ava. He just said hi. I was like, oh, they're gonna sleep together. And I told my friends that, she's like, oh, you're not gonna sleep together. Sure enough, they did. Show sure enough, they did. Show sure enough. Show sure enough. Even when I was watching As World Turns, I remember one of my friends, her mom was a huge As World Turns fan. And she's like, I don't understand what is going on with Luke. He's just acting so stupid. And I was like, oh, he's gay. And she's like, really? How, how did you guess that? It was just something in the writing. I could just tell. I could just tell. And it's the same thing with this Jada Hunter storyline. She is a daughter of Kayla Brady. Johnson, sorry. Kayla Brady Johnson. Let me, you know, all these last names, Kelly Bray Johnson, okay? And here's the thing. And I talk, like I said, like I said before, I talked about this on the GH video where I said I think that Cody Bell has Huntington's. And that's why they're trying to push him and Britt so hard together on GH. The drama's in the details, the writing is in the details. For me, usually my theories on this are right. Now, I don't focus so much on the how. Even, I don't even, I'm not even familiar with her history with Marcus Hunter. Like, I'm not even familiar with that past history. Like, One Like to Live, I'm familiar with the past history, GH. Days, I'm not so familiar as much with the history from the past as I am with the past 10 years, with the exception of the past 10 years. But I'm not focused on the how, how the writers are going to make her Kayla's daughter. I'm not focused on that and how Kayla forgot that she had a whole other daughter. I'm not focused on the how. I just believe in my heart of hearts, this is what it is. Because as a soap viewer, and I said this on the GH Review, I pay attention to what's in the writing. Even that guy, that Greg guy, who's doing all the stabbings in Salem, I just feel like we're going to get a little bit more from him. I don't know. I could be wrong. But like they, they had this man on screen. He was trying to go after uh, 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 Nicole and, and, and Eric. And then he went after uh, Jake. I don't know. That, that guy, that Greg guy. And I, I looked in the caption. They gave him a name. And this is what I notice too sometimes. Because I don't really watch the show captions as much as I used to. 
But sometimes you know back in the day with soaps, they would just say villain or other person. That tells you that person really has no relevance. But they gave him a whole name. His name is Greg, the guy who stabbed uh, Jake Demira. I got a feeling we're gonna see more from him too. And you know, Days has a well-rounded way of doing storylines. Even when they had the governor on, when the governor was sitting there and with uh, Pauline and Abe, I was like, hmm, the governor's at their house? Oh, there's some type of scandal or something he about to do. Because when they bring somebody in the scene, y'all got to pay attention to the details. Y'all got to pay attention. You know what I mean? Because it's not like the governor has been introduced for a while or we've heard them having conversations about how um, Paulina wanted to get Abe to run for governor. We never heard those conversations before. She, there's never even a mention of that. But all of a sudden, the governor pops up your door one day. Oh, yeah, some, something going down. Some, some, something going down. Something is going down. Oh, yeah. 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 And the fact they brought back Alex Kyriakis and now him and Sonny Bratz going to business together. Let me tell you something. Something's going to happen with Sonny's marriage. I can feel it. I can feel something's going to happen with Alex and Sonny with one of their relationships. And it's going to pit them together as brothers. Which is good because we all know that Chandler Massey plays well. He, le he, he, he left the show again, you know. Because he's, he's an engineer in real life. Yeah, he got a real day job. <laughs> And Zach Kennedy wants to keep playing Sonny, so I think what a, what a good way that Will gets a job and he goes off canvas. Now, with Robert Scott Wilson playing Alex Kiriakis, I'm here for it because I understand that the actress who plays Sierra, she's ready to be done. She's ready to kind of, I guess, move on to greener pastures. And it would be weird to have Ben on canvas without Sierra. He doesn't really have a lot of allies. Jake just got shot, which maybe Jake is coming back since Kristen and Rolf just took him. And I saw the previews for next week. How it seemed like Rolf is gonna try to bring him back to life. Um, that's not a spoiler, by the way. That's in the previews. You know, I'm doing spoilers around here. Um, but I got a feeling this is gonna be some good storyline. And I think, you know, now he gets played like instead of the reformed serial killer, like a playboy. So this is something new for Robert Scott Wilson. I'm, I'm kind of here for it, Lord, guys. I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. I'm kind of here for it, honestly. I wanna see, honestly, uh, where that will go and how they'll write for him. Because, like I said, Ben didn't have any more allies. Jake was getting killed off, Will is gone. It's just not really, and, and Sierra and is gone too. It's just not a lot of allies. And it would just be weird that Sierra would just be somewhere on her own without Ben. That would just seem a little off the kilter at this point in their story. And it just didn't seem like the writers had any, anything else to really write for him at this point. But I want to talk about Demira Enterprise. Gabby taking over. Now, I think I said this in other videos. It reminds me of when Dorian Lord took over Buchanan Enterprises on One Like to Live. Because Gabby, to me, is like a young Dorian Lord. That's, that's, that's what I get. And I, and I, and I talked about this on a, on, a, on a prior day's review, where I said I see the similarities between the two. And the thing with Gabby is, she's a villain, but what humanizes her is the fact that she has a daughter with Will and Sonny, who are considered loved by the whole town. And it was similar with Dorian Lord, where she was a villain, but what humanized her was when she was there for Vicky, when she, Vicky found out that she was molested by her father, the secret room, and also the fact that she took care of her nieces, Blair and, and Kelly, and even her nephew, Paul, when her, uh, her, her sisters, Melinda, and what was the other one? Melinda and something else. I can't remember the other, the other, the other. Melinda and Addie, Melinda and Addie were mentally incapacitated. She took care of her nieces. You know, that was the thing with Dorian. So that humanized her. And Dorian was a, Dorian Lord was about her family. She was about her family. I've never seen the soaps ever write a powerhouse woman family like they did the Kramers. I have yet to see that again, like reincarnate itself. Because Dorian Lord, she was very nefarious, but she always did things for the sake of her family. The times when she would stand up to, 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 to Todd on behalf of Blair, like she always was there for her family. She was ride or die for those Kramer women. We're talking about Adriana, Cassie, Langston, uh, Kelly, Blair, Star. You know what I'm saying? She was ride or die for her Kramer women. She was ride or die for them. And so to me, I see a lot of the similarities between the two of them. And Gabby going to go talk to Abel was very insensitive. But at the same time, Gabby had a point. Like, sis, it's now or never. You don't got nothing going on. Ava left the mob life behind, so she don't got no money. And Jake's apartment was looking kind of tight. <laughs> it was kind of tight. So she's about to fake the marriage so that Ava could have the shares. And you know what? Even though it's for Gabby's own selfish gain, Ava better take that deal. She's smart. Because you saw how quick EJ went to the hospital. Yeah, I'm going to sign off. Didn't even talk to Ava. Knowing that, and I'm sure he knows that, that Jake is with, with Ava. He didn't even talk to Ava. Didn't, no conversation with her. 
yeah, I'm here to sign off on his body. Like, not giving two Fs. All just to get the shares of Demera. That's all he cares about. So it was smart for Gabby to say, listen, position yourself right. You may not like me. That's cool. But listen, I got a proposition here for you. And to me, that makes the most sense. That makes the most sense. Why not go after that? And see, even with Kristen coming back to town, EJ's trying to proposition her for the shares of Demera. You can tell... Kristen was thinking about it, but you could tell she was also probably thinking, there's no way I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to partner with you because I need you to stick up for me. You weren't even there. You show me that. And if she was there for him when he was incapacitated, he couldn't even feed himself and she was there for him and he didn't care. That says a lot about EJ. And honestly, Kristen was right. She could control Gabby. She can't control EJ. So it's, it was being more in her interest to, to, to side with Gabby. And honestly, I got a feeling we're going to see a little bit of a union, a triangle union here. We're going to see Gabby, we're going to see Ava, and we're going to see Kristen. All kind of foes in their own way. But that's the only way they're going to be able to take and have any kind of control of Demera. Because the Demera men are not going to care for them. Let's be real. They don't even care for Kristen, their own sister. They don't give a damn about her. They definitely give a damn about Gabby and the fact that she was, she was Stefan's widow. They didn't care. And you saw how quick EJ went to the hospital, like I said, to go sign those papers for, for Jake's body. Not one conversation with Ava. Not one. Not one. Not even a phone call. Didn't even give a damn. Did not even give a damn. So it, they're, they're smart to team up. The enemy and my enemy is your friend, or so they say. Uh, well, like they said, keep your friends close, but keep your enemies real close. <laughs> It's in their smart and their best interest to team up with each other, honestly, in my opinion. That's the smartest thing they could do. Um, I want to talk next about the Dr. Rolf recast um, before I talk about EJ. Well, let, well, first, let me get to EJ and Chad. And I mentioned this before uh, a couple minutes earlier into the video where I understand EJ going after going after Chad. Didn't really like get him uh, going after Kate as much because Kate don't give a damn about you. But even EJ kicking Chad out of the house... It's, it's sad because his wife did just die and she was brutally murdered. And I did feel like that wasn't the place at the time. But at the same time, I can't understand where EJ is coming from. Like, you were going to have him rot for a crime behind bars. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason why you said something now is because your wife was murdered. And he gave Chad a little bit of time. But even when he was just like, you better have the certificate of Shaz. I want the certificate of Shaz when you come back downstairs. And I'm like, well, damn, EJ, what well, damn? Like, you know what I mean? Like... And then he's like, my nephew, my nephew, my niece are welcome to stay here in this house. They're low, they're low to stay here in this house. They're welcome to stay. And I'm like, well, what parents are going to have their kids live in a house where they're not living with them? Ideally. So, but honestly, Chad kind of made his bet on this. He really, really made his bet on this. Because the thing about it is I get him wanting to keep EJ in jail. He thought EJ tried to put the moves on Abigail. But prior to that, what was your motive, dude? Like, what was your, just to get shares of Demira? What was your motive for even collaborating with, with Lucas on this? And, and I'm sorry, I, I want Chad to get some flack by this from everybody else in town. Because Chad knew too. So why was Will so cool with Chad? Chad knew. Chad knew who really kidnapped your mom and didn't say nothing. He knew. Which means he was part of it. He was a part of it. Will, he was a part of it. But no. Everybody's cool with Chad. Why? Because his wife just died. And I get it. That's cool and all. Don't be wrong. You don't have to be nasty. But where's the accountability on that? Where's the accountability on every, everyone's still Everyone's still there with Chad. But where's the accountability on that? He was a part of that. In fact, if it wasn't for Chad, Lucas would not even have been able to orchestrate that plan. Lucas don't got no money. You know Lucas ain't got no money. So I just... To me, that's just stuff that I think about. All right, I want to talk next, so I don't run out too much time, is the Dr. Rolf recast. It's just not doing it for me, guys. And I understand, I know this is a quick stint storyline this guy's on for. No shade to the act, because I don't want to make it an actor thing, because I think he's talented. I just, and maybe because I'm so used to other guys play Dr. Rolf in the role, but it's just not working for me. It's almost like when they recast Celeste in 2010 with that new actress, and I was like, no, this is not doing it for me. This ain't, this ain't doing it for me. Speaking of which, by the way, I didn't know till the Possession storyline that Celeste's accent was supposed to be New Orleans and Creole, as they call it. Uh, I thought it was a British accent the whole time. I'm not going to lie to you. I thought Celeste always had a British accent, to be honest with you. But it's almost like when they recast with that new Celeste in 2010, I was like, oh, this is so not doing it for me. They look nothing alike. They don't sound alike. Nothing. And I understand you maybe can't get it like all the way there, but they even look completely different. Just like on every single side of the spectrum. So this Dr. Rolf recast, it's, it's somewhat there. The accent does feel very forced. Whereas the last actor who played Dr. Rolf, I don't, that's probably wasn't his real accent either, but it seemed more natural. 
in a sense. Which I'm now starting to realize a lot of times in the 90s, whether you're watching WWE or if you're watching the soaps, you saw people with accents and all that type of stuff. And acting, it was always, most of the times it wasn't real. Their real accent. Which now I know that. Like the person who plays Dr. Albrecht on, on GH, that's not her real, her real voice. Which I thought it was. Because she, she's been keeping that going for years and years and years and years. I thought that was her real accent. On some level, but it's not. Because usually when they come in with, with villains with cheesy, you know, a cheesy Russian accent or something like that coming in, they're not going to be on for long. Which I can understand because that's that's kind of tough to keep that up the whole time, you know. Constantly keep up an accent up the whole entire time. But there's Doctor Robert Gass not doing it for me. He doesn't have that same je ne sais quoi as the original Doctor Rob. It's like it's not doing it for me, guys. It's just it's just not. It's kind of like okay, Joe Jamie talked about this when he said Linda Dano played Vivian Alamein. I gotta be I gotta agree that was just not cut. It wasn't doing it. Even Robin Strasser who 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 played Vivian. I love her. I love her on One Like to Live, but it didn't work for me either. I mean, it didn't work for me either when she played Vivian Alamein. It didn't work for me. Um, I don't know why it just didn't work. Especially, I think it's because I already know the history of Vivian Alamein. It just didn't work. It didn't work for me. Um, God, I think that's everything, guys. I think I covered everything in this review, guys. That's everything for my Days of Lives review of Mother's Conviction. That's everything, guys. Oh, I did a live with JLJ Media. I think I talked about in the GH review. Uh, check it out. I did a live with him and Albert Bostic. That was cool. It was it was super super cool to that. We were talking for almost two hours. Honestly, I think the conversation could have gone for another hour. But we have to realize for longevity purposes and uh, uh, audience retention, it's kind of cut off at some point. But it was a great live. We talked about the history of soaps, uh, representation of soaps, and all that stuff. So I thought it was pretty fun, guys. I'm going to put the link for that in the description. Check that out. I also did a skit called Elijah Lee. There's a lot of bad acting and cheesiness in it. So watch it. <laughs> and shout out to Mario for helping me direct that skit. He came by and helped me direct that skit. And we just had a lot of fun um, doing it. Um, I think it's probably one of my best skits I've done before. One of my best skits. There's a lot of bad acting. I'm not trying to be an actor, guys. I just have fun with it. I'm just like throwing some crap out there, having some fun with it from time to time. I like to shake things up, you know what I mean, from time to time. But it was a lot of fun doing that. Uh, check out that skit. And that has been it. This has been the Soap Sanctuary, guys. I am out. Also, oh, I should have covered this on my other review. All right, I'll just comment back to them because someone was asking me about what I thought about the Australian soap ending. I got a lot of comments I have yet to respond to, y'all. I'm not even playing. I'm still, I'm still sorting through them. I'm sorting through them comments. But anyways, guys, the collab was super fun. Um, I've always wanted to do a collab with JLJ Media. I've always wanted to. But I'm the type of person I want to be wanted. <laughs> so it feels good to know that I was wanted at that point. You know what I mean? I want to be wanted. You know, that's the kind of person I like. I want to be wanted. You know, I don't, I don't want to be taught. I want to be wanted. So even with Fido Xavier, when he reached out on my channel, I was like, okay, well, if he loves the content... And let's do an interview with him, you know? So, Albert and James are having some interactions, talking about race. And I was like, okay, this is perfect. This is going to be kind of cool. So, even when I do collabs with Albert, it's, it's, always, it's always fun to do that. Like, it is always fun to do collabs because it's something different. You can hear from other soap viewers, their opinions, what they knew. Like, I think I was watching Queers and Soaps, and they had Candace Mack on. And they were talking about Reva's clone. And, oh, my God. It's very rare that I'll sit through an hour and a half long video uh, people talking about souls but that was the first time i listened from start to finish and candace mack was hilarious um on that review it was hilarious and she knew so much about soaps like oh my gosh so it was it was good it was good i, I love listening to other soap content creators i really do you know like i said i watch rock tv sometimes i watch gh envy uh sabrina fake gh just to get different per takes and views so that is always um that's always fun um there's another lady she does soap opera reviews they're called but she calls them soap opera spoilers um, and she does GH and y and R. I, I'm, I'm forgetting her name right now. Forgive me. I'm forget, forgetting her name. And then there is, uh, oh God, Lanique or Leticia. I'm, I think it's one of those. I'm getting the name wrong. I'm getting the name wrong. Forgive me. Forgive me on that. Forgive me on that, guys. There's so many, there's so many of them. But she does reviews. And I love hearing it, especially when someone's very, like, opinionated. I love it. Because I want to hear what they're going to say. Like, you guys know I'm a, I'm a huge Nina fan. You know what I mean? I'm a huge Nina fan. And I think as one of my subscribers, Janice, would say, she calls him Mike Reeves. But I don't know, low-key, from some time to time, I be, I, be, I be feeling Mike Reeves. From time to time, I really be feeling Mike Reeves. I be feeling him from time to time. <laughs> Mike Reeves, as they call it. Mike Reeves, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Reeves. All right. But um, that's my digitalized review, guys. I'm out. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, I don't want to say share, but, you know, like, comment, subscribe. I don't say that enough, honestly, I feel like these videos. Maybe I need to. But I don't want to sound like those YouTubers. Hey, guys, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to smash that like button. 
I'll be hating that crap. Because <laughs> I'm just like, let me first get to the content and see if I like it. <laughs> and sometimes I don't. <laughs> Anyways, guys, that is my uh, day's review. Um, I was going to do, like I said, some more reviews. But um, I got a lot to do. And I was going to try to do half today, half tomorrow. But I was like, that was going to work. Because tomorrow my boyfriend's coming over. Uh, it's my turn to cook. So I'm trying to like, you know, you know, that's going to take up a lot of my time. And speaking of which, I remember when I did the interview with Fido, he was actually cooking. The, he was cooking in my kitchen. And so it was kind of cool. Like right after that interview, he's like, oh, I'm so proud of you. And then we were just eating. And it was like a little chicken, a little chicken and some rice. You know what I'm saying? It was good. It was good. Yeah, it was good. All right, anyways, guys, I'm out. i am got to go pick up my groceries today. Um... I got them from Publix. I was going to go to Walmart, but you know, Walmart, you know how it is sometimes you shop at Walmart, you might buy something and you go home and you find out it had a bag or it had a hole in it, it had a hole in what you purchased and you didn't know until you got home because that's just how Walmart is. You know, sometimes the stuff is half opened and you don't realize it until you got home. <laughs> Walmart is full of surprises. But anyways, guys, I got to go. I got to pick up my food. Um, and that's that. This has been a Soap Sanctuary, guys. Comment what was your favorite part of this week's days. Comment my GH video. Watch clip, all that bad stuff, all that good stuff, and I'm out of here, all right? I gotta go. I'm out.